All right, sir, Mr. Knight, if you could come forward to be sworn. Sir, if you could just have a seat, please. Right, sir, I'm, what's, what we're doing is I'm just going to ask you a few questions outside the presence of the jury, and then the attorneys are going to ask you a few questions, okay? Sure. And then I'm going to have you step back outside after that, okay? No problem. All right, what's your full name, sir? Uh, Morgan Higby Knight. Okay, you don't have to be that close. All right. All right, how do you spell your last name? N-I-G-H-T. Okay. All right, and sir... Um, before I can allow you to testify, I just want to ask you a few questions. Um, have you seen any of the trial that's been going on for the past six weeks? Um, approximately five weeks ago, a friend of mine texted me that Hicksville was mentioned, and I watched a little clip where okay. it was mentioned. Which clip did you watch? Um, I believe it was uh, somebody testifying about, I think it was the security guard testifying maybe about Hicksville or um, I forget exactly who was testifying, but it was something where Hicksville was mentioned and uh, it was uh, about something about a wrist or something like that. All right. And what did you do after that? Did at some point did you get in contact with attorneys? So I didn't reach out to them. Um, I didn't really care. The, okay. Uh, the innkeepers that worked at Hicksville before reached out to them and said, we saw some stuff that wasn't true. And then they asked, is it okay if I give the attorneys your phone number? So the attorneys reached out to me. Okay. And when did the attorneys reach out to you? May 3rd. May 3rd. And yeah. you talked to the attorneys at that time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not Camille, but um, Gerilyn. Okay. And then have you seen any other parts of the trial? No, she instructed me not to watch anything about it, regardless no. of if it was about Hicksville or not. So I haven't, I've been Since keeping off, off the internet and turning off uh, anything that seems to be like it's on social media. So I just don't watch any of that. Okay. All right. And questions, Mr. Yes, Brenner? So Mr. Knight, you were contacted by an attorney for Mr. Depp on May 3rd? Yes. Okay. And you said it was Carolyn? Gerilyn. Gerilyn. Oh, Gerilyn. I got it. Okay. And <laughs> what is pronounced Gerilyn. Okay. Can you tell us the conversation you had with her at that time? Oh, Gerilyn. Yeah, she um, just asked me my... She really said Gerilyn. He's like, it's pronounced Gerilyn. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Recollection of the evening, and I told her, and she said okay, um, would you mind testifying? And I said, sure. And she said, uh, okay, well then, we're not sure if we're gonna call you or not, but just in case, please don't watch anything having to do with the case. And I said, I will do. Um, now, how is it that, to your best knowledge, how is it that Gerilyn was able to get hold of you. How, how, did, how did she know that you knew something? So, like I said, two of my innkeepers, my innkeeper and my manager had reached out to her team, um, I think through email, and one of them uh, texted me and said, hey, do you mind if we give Gerilyn your phone number? Now, you also communicated uh, on Twitter, did you not, about this case? Yeah, two weeks prior to Gerilyn reaching out to me, um, someone had made a comment about something that happened by the fire pit, and I said, that's not my recollection. I didn't see, that's not, that's not what I saw. So who was it that made a comment about something that happened at the fire pit? So once um, I was told about uh, the fact that Higgsville was mentioned, I went, and did a Twitter search of Hicksville trailer. So it was, I don't know who it was, but I was just like, what are they saying about Hicksville? And so that was um, why I did a search just to see, cause it was weird and fascinating cause the night to me um, wasn't that remarkable in the context of all the different experiences I've had at the trailer palace. 
So explain to me, please, what you mean by you did a trailer search. So if you go to Twitter and you put in keywords and do a search, all the um, tweets regarding that subject come up or anything with those keywords in it. So that is how I found the tweet that I replied to. Okay. And how many tweets did you find that mentioned Hicksville when you did that trailer search? Probably like five or six. I only replied to one of them. Okay. And what do you recall those tweets saying about Hicksville? Um, the one that I replied to said that uh, there was some incident by the fire pit and, <clears throat> uh, and Johnny was yelling at Amber. Um, and I replied that my, that I didn't see that. I was there all night and I was, you know, I was working that night. So I didn't see anything like that. So you're. Oh, so, okay. So this, this guy is a, is a key witness that could potentially, potential, potentially, damn, be very, very good for Johnny's side of the case here. This is just a sneaky little key witness that they, that they squeezed in here. Well, I mean, I'm sure they've planned on having him in here, obviously, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is, I think, I think this is probably pretty good for, for a Johnny, honestly, because you got a whole bunch of people talking about how he was yelling at Amber and all that kind of stuff. And this guy's like, oh, no, 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 I, I was working that night. I, I saw him and he wasn't yelling. So this will, this will be very interesting. Her best recollection on that one was that somebody said somebody was testifying that Johnny was yelling at Amber. Yeah. And I, I believe, um, grabbed her or something along those lines. Okay. Do you recall who said Johnny was yelling at Amber and grabbed her? I have no idea it was a stranger, so I didn't really pay attention to who was writing it. All right, and you said mm. that you responded to it. How did you respond to it? I said that's not what happened. I was there all night. Um, uh, yeah, basically. I'm that, paraphrasing. It was a, a Did few you say ago. anything about what you thought happened? I just said that didn't happen. I didn't say what I mean, I think I believe I said maybe something along the lines of uh, from what I saw, Amber was the one acting jealous, not Johnny. And you said this to one of the tweets. Yes. Do you recall whether that was the Umbrella Man? I don't recall. The hell? That's a ridiculous name, though. Okay. <laughs> so tell me about the other five uh, tweets that you recall seeing when you ran your trailer search. Um, I think they were similar in nature, but I didn't, I don't specifically remember the details of them. Uh, that was pretty much the only one I remembered and that's the only one I replied to. Do you remember anything about the other? Bro, I can't even stand seeing her said? face. No. Okay. When you said that somebody told you about a security guard, what was your understanding of what the security guard said? Um, I just, I got Ugh. a text that, uh, somebody in the trial had said, uh, look at that. Her face just freaks me out now, dude. I just feel like, <laughs> I feel like there's no fucking soul in there. <laughs> there's no soul. You soulless beast. I got a text that, uh, somebody in the trial had said, uh, that, they were talking about the Trailer Palace at, during the trial. And so that's what led me to go on Twitter and do a search. And did you have any communications with the two innkeepers? I feel like she keeps looking at what me. what you knew or what I you feel, thought. I no. feel like she's staring right at me. <laughs> it's so scary. Quit looking at me. You're going to cut my finger off too, aren't you? No, I hadn't talked to them in years and so, still haven't regarding the case. So how is it that the innkeepers then contacted you and said, do you mind if we give you the telephone number to the attorneys? Because they still have me in their phone. And um, Christy, who was the manager at the time, is the one that texted me and said, um, hey, do you mind if we pass this along? They, um, Mr. Depp's attorneys want to talk to you. Do you mind if we pass what along? 
your phone number. Right, but how is it that, what is the communication you had with the innkeepers that even led them to understand that you believed you had knowledge about Hicksville, the Hicksville incident? There was no conversation. They knew because they were both working that same night. <laughs> what a stupid question. Obviously, they knew that when this was going down, he was working along with them. It's not like they sat there and conspired this together. Bro, Amber's team just doesn't have shit to work with. And the sad part is, like, it's not that her team is a bad team, but they just don't. They have to fight extra with, like, no ammunition at all, dude, <clears throat> for this woman, because this woman is batshit crazy. Um, Jenna was the innkeeper and she was there along with me that night. Christy was the one who texted me and she had come in the following morning for her shift. And I slept over. I was um, living. Quit looking at me, night. Amber. So, Staring right at me. I'm trying to understand. So just based on the fact that seven years ago, they happened to know that you were working that night. Nine years ago. And it's because okay. I was there okay. with them. My math. Well, it's. 2022 right now and that was what year oh that was 2013, 2013. you're right okay so well, how is it that out of the blue they remembered nine years ago uh that that you worked there that night and that you might have some knowledge set I mean, this woman honest, straight like we do get um celebrity sometimes but it was you know it's not that unmemorable it's not like it's any other night of the week so i'm sure they remembered the specifics of that night had Mr. Depp's attorneys ever attempted for real like if, if, if you're working just this normal little nine to five job or whatever and Johnny Depp and Amber Heard show up I'm pretty sure you're gonna remember that for ever you know for a really long time so of course they remember it man this attorney is not asking very good questions at all this guy needs to just put her in her place the specifics of that night had Mr. Depp's attorneys ever attempted to contact you before? No. Had you ever attempted to contact Mr. Depp's attorneys before? No, I had no interest. All right. Have you had any conversations with Mr. Depp's attorneys other than the one you described with Geraldine? Um, since? Yes. Well, I met with Camille last night. All right. And what did you, what was that conversation? Please describe. I just went through, um, you know, the story again that I had told Geraldine. And w let's let's hear what that story was. <laughs> you want me to go through? Yes. The whole story, um, Your Honor. We would object to attorney work product. No. There's no attorney work product. No, I'll, I'll overrule that. All right. Okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, that I. I described like them getting to the trailer palace, uh, the uh, me showing them around, the interactions I had when I was on duty with Mr. Depp and Mr. Her or Miss Heard, um, how uh, the evening progressed throughout the night, the levels of drinking <clears throat> and drug use that I witnessed, um, the uh, um, what the state of the damaged trailer the next morning um and basically just yeah the details that i i, I had only um you know spent total 45 minutes to an hour with mr depp um and miss heard throughout the e throughout the entire course of the night so it was my um, recollection of those events during that time and what did Ms. Vasquez say to you. Your Honor, this is uh, beyond, we object on the grounds that it's beyond the scope of the voir dire. No, which is I limited think whatever to the three she criteria. said to him but is May I very please finish quick. stating my objection, Your Honor? Go ahead, yes, sir. The objection is that it's beyond the scope of the voir dire, Your Honor, enumerated the three criteria which are relevant here. And this is a rebuttal witness, so. Your Honor, whatever Ms. Vasquez shared with him is going to be very important here because they knew by this time he was going to be a witness. So well, that, that's what, last night. So right. how does that fit into one of the three factors of deciding whether or not he's going to testify? Well, <clears throat> oh yeah, Amber's 
uh, side, Amber's team didn't know this guy was going to come in. <laughs> Snuck him in there. A little secret weapon. Can't stand Amber's team, bro. One of the three factors, you're, well, you're on a man approach so that the witness doesn't hear Okay, that's fine. Oh, I hate this. Now we got to sit here in freaking silence. Fast forward. Quiz. Uh, oh. Mr. Knight, did yes. Ms. Vasquez uh, provide you with any information that anyone had testified to or uh, said at any point? No, she didn't talk about anything except for asking me my experience and, and just getting a clear understanding of what my experience was. She didn't mention anything outside of the scope of what I saw and just asked me for the facts and told me, just tell the truth and let me know, you know. Do you know what any of the witnesses said in this trial? About, I mean, outside of what I described earlier with the um, a friend of mine texting that someone was talking about Trailer Palace, I do not. Do you know whether any of the witnesses testified about any jealousy? Uh, other than the tweet that I replied to, no. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, may we approach? All right. Well, do you have any questions? Oh. All right. Sir, if you could ha ha have a seat back outside the courtroom. Sure. Thank you. Can I leave my water? Yes, you can leave your water. Okay, so what's happening now? Is it coming back in? Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. What the? What you do? Did the live free what? What the hell's happening here? Click record, right? Oh, okay. It was on their end. The, not um, Damn the it. rec room up at kind of amenities. There's a pool in so the palace. We missed, so we missed um, there's also different kind of amenities. There's a pool in Joshua Tree. Um, there's a rec room up at uh, Hicksville Pines. When did you first become the owner of the Trailer Palace? Trailer Palace, I started building it in 2009. It took about a year with uh, my collaborator, Stephen Butcher, and on the trailers. And we got done and opened um, in 2010. Did there come a time that you sold the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Yeah, I did at the beginning of 2020. I um, had some health issues and just it was too much to run both at the same time. So I chose Idlewild because it was newer and shinier. And just for my sake, um, how long did you own the Trailer Palace? So 10 years of us being open, 11 years total. And what was the Hicksville Trailer Palace? So um, it started out as a uh, artist retreat. I was a filmmaker at the time and wanted a place to get away and work on film projects outside of Los Angeles. Uh, I also put in a recording studio so musicians could record records there. Uh, I had lived in New Orleans for five years, and there was an amazing recording studio there called Kingsway, where all the musicians would come, and they'd live in this big mansion and record their records, and I just thought that was a really neat thing for artists to be able to get away and create their, um, create whatever they were working on. Over the course of the, uh, build out of all the trailers, themed trailers, which I'm a huge fan of this hotel called Madonna Inn. And uh, so I wanted to do really detailed themed trailers. It became too expensive to just make a living off of an artist retreat. So I decided before I was done to make it a hotel as well. 
And what were your job responsibilities, generally speaking, when you owned the Hicksfield Trailer Palace? So I would um, be live-in manager some nights, um, a couple nights a week. I would also drive out from Los Angeles twice a week and bring supplies that you can't get out in the Yucca Valley area and Joshua Tree. Um, there's just a lot of things like, you know, Smart and Finals, Costco's and stuff. So I would drive that stuff out. Um, there's also no uh, USPS. So sometimes I'd have to get things shipped to my house and drive them out as well. Uh, I would also just do um, constantly building and creating new stuff at Trailer Palace, uh, whether it's new trailers or amenities. So I would be working on that stuff as well. I'm a big fan of the fact that Disneyland is always making it better and better. And when you were the live-in manager, does, does that mean that you spent the night at the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Yeah, we have a house on site um, where the recording studio was, and there's a bedroom in there. So whoever is live-in manager those nights um, stays in the house and, and basically lives there. There's a kitchen and everything. Have you ever met the plaintiff in this case, Mr. Depp? I had met him really briefly at the Viper Room in the late 90s. Um, uh, I had worked with some of the people that performed there and was good friends with uh, Girl Robin from the Pussycat Dolls and um, some other friends in this band, the Imposters. So I was there and I met him once. How about Miss Hurd? Ever met her? I had never met her before. Um, they were guests at the hotel. When was the first time that you met Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd together? Um, in late May 2013, uh, when they were guests, uh, Mr. Depp's Assistant Nathan had rent out the entire place so they could have a night um, there in privacy. And what do you recall, if anything, about Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's arrival to the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Mr. Depp got lost. Uh, so um, his security guard, who arrived early, asked me if I could go fetch them because he had an old car that. Um, didn't really fare on the dirt roads out there, which are pretty horrible. So um, I went out and made sure that they got themselves and the car back to Hicksville safely. Do you remember approximately at what time that was? It was three to four in the afternoon. What was Mr. Depp's demeanor when they first arrived? At Trailer Palace, he was super excited about the place, really complimentary, <clears throat> um, just had a lot of questions and um, was just seemed like it was in a really great mood. And how about Miss Hurd's demeanor? Anything stick out? She was pretty quiet. Um, she uh, just kind of didn't say that much when I was giving them the tour of the grounds and the trailer. And was anyone else with Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd when they first arrived? Uh, there was people that were arriving throughout the afternoon. So um, there was. Uh, um, I think 10 to 12 people total ended up staying. Uh, the security guard had gotten there earlier and just to check out the place. But, um, but yeah. And did I understand your testimony previously that the entire trailer park was rented out by Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yeah, the whole place slept, I believe at the time, about 25 people, but there was only 10 to 12 in this party. And who was part of that party besides Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Um, I'm really horrible with names, but I remember one of them was uh, Miss Hurd's sister and the security guard I mentioned before, but I honestly forgot his name too. What happened when Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd first came onto the property? So um, I gave them a tour of, we give all guests a tour of their specific trailer and the grounds and um, show them around the, uh, when someone rents the whole place, they get uh, another trailer called the bar trailer, which is basically a place to set up their alcohol and stuff. And some people in the group were just putting their beverages in that area. And where were you when uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, did there come a time when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd went to the bar trailer? Um, I didn't notice most of the time that my interactions with them, everything's kind of centrally located. So there's a fire pit, bar trailer and picnic tables all right in the same area, so they were generally around that area the entire evening that I saw them. And what did you observe of Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd as the evening progressed? Um, so Mr. Depp was super, 
was super curious and really nice. Um, he was also really interested in my innkeeper because she was a musician, so they would talk about music a lot. At one point, uh, the innkeeper who lived at the next door property went home and grabbed her guitar and they had um, sung a song or two around the campfire uh, in the early evening. Um, there was another instance where Mr. Depp, the innkeeper, her name is Jenna, and myself were talking about books and music and Ms. Heard came over and kind of interjected. She seemed a little annoyed that um, Mr. Depp wasn't spending time with her. What about Ms. Hurd's demeanor made you think that she was annoyed? Um, I think just generally she, uh, it's hard, like she, I think, uh, I don't know, it, it was just, it was just like a gut reaction, like I, I, I can't describe it, but um, you know. How long were you with Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard that evening, generally? So throughout the course of the evening, I was probably 40, mostly with Mr. Depp, but 45 minutes to an hour total. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, that's over the whole course until the end of the night after the check-in. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to observe Mr. Depp, Depp interact with other people, guests on the property that evening? Yes, um, I saw him hanging out with his security guard at one point and um, outside of the uh, time that him and Jenna were singing around the campfire, he was off by himself um, a lot of the time and Ms. Heard was over at the, uh, at the um, campfire with her friends and seemed to have a good time. And if you haven't already, can you generally describe for the jury your observations of Ms. Heard that evening? Um, yeah, she was, uh, she was, seemed to be having a really nice time with her friends around the campfire. Um, and yeah, everyone was in a pretty good mood. Did there come a time in the evening that you observed Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard have a disagreement or an argument? Yes. Um, <laughs> I was speaking with Mr. Depp, uh, just one-on-one, -on -one, talking about Hicksville, and um, Ms. Hurd uh, came over and she said that I want to talk to you and seemed really upset about something. So I went and um, back in the house because it was really, um, they went off on their own and they, she started yelling at him and I, I didn't want to hear it, it honestly was really, triggering because I've been in an uh, emotionally abusive Objection. relationship before. Objections. Move to strike. What's the objection? You're up for me. We approach. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't want him saying that, did they? Really triggering for him because... He's been in an emotionally abusive relationship before. That's clear, clearly how Amber was coming off, yelling at Johnny, probably talking down to him, condescending, dehumanizing. Mr. Knight, will you please just explain for us what you observed when you saw Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard having an argument? Yes. Um, so... Ms. Heard asked him to go talk um, off to the side and she was upset at him and she was yelling at him. Um, and I personally had been in- Objection. A... All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. okay. If you could just explain to the jury um, what you observed when you saw Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard having an argument. Okay. Um, he was, kind of cowering and seemed almost afraid and um, it was really like odd to see because he was older than her obviously so um, but I just went back in the house because I didn't Objection wanna... to what he did. All right, I'll sustain us too. Understood. So after you observed the argument, fair to say you went back to the to your 
house on site? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay. Um, what happened after that? So when I saw Mr. Depp um, on my next rounds, he apologized profusely and said, I'm really sorry about that. She was upset. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. Next question. What, if any, type of reaction did Mr. Depp have? Like how Amber's attorney is like, objection, objection. Starts freaking yelling it out so aggressive. This guy's just telling his damn story, what he what he saw. He was just really... Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. He's going to say it again. It's the reaction. It's not the statement. All right, if you could make that clear, that's yeah. fine. Just what type of physical reaction did Mr. Depp have after the argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? He honestly, throughout the rest of the night, became a lot more quiet and um, and was uh, just very more petulant. In the beginning of the night, he um, was a lot more outgoing and extroverted. And throughout, as the course of the night went on, he was less and less so and more quiet. Did you observe any of the guests consuming alcohol while on the property? Um, I assume they were. I mean, people had cups and there was alcohol set up in the bar trailer, but I didn't physically see them pour alcohol into their cup and cup go into the mouth, per se. Did you witness Mr. Depp drink any alcohol that evening? I couldn't say. Okay. Anything about Mr. Depp's demeanor that made you think he was perhaps intoxicated? Yes. Um, as the night went on, he, uh, I... I'm a former bar owner, so I'm even though I wasn't drinking that night, I'm very familiar with the uh, signs. So um, just as the night went on, like I said, he became more and more quiet, but he also, as we would have conversations, his uh, head would kind of sway a little bit back and forth, which was a little, you know, it was he was much less sharp than he was earlier in the night. Did Ms. Hurd appear intoxicated to you? Um, she did, uh, she seemed, I think when she was angry at him, it, it seemed like she was intoxicated, but that's just based on my experience and my own personal trauma dealing with abuse. Okay. Objection, Your Honor, move to strike. All right, I'll sustain the objection. I'll strike it from the record. Please disregard that testimony. Did you observe anyone do or take drugs? I did not. Did you witness Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interact other than the argument that you previously described for the jury? Um, the, at the end of the night, I heard a commotion. I was inside the house and came out. I couldn't tell what was going on. Um, and Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were having a discussion about, um, about I, I'm not sure what, but then they went to their trailer. At that point, a lot of people had already gone to bed. So... Um, it just kind of petered out. Everyone went to bed, including myself, and I didn't hear anything else the rest of the night. What time did the evening come to an end? I'd say it was almost around 3 a.m. Did you ever see Mr. Depp grab anyone? Objection, no. leading. Sustained. Did you ever see Mr. Depp become physical with anyone? Objection, leading. Sustained. Next question. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp get angry that evening? Objection, leading. Sustained. Okay. What, if anything, happened the next morning? Um, the next morning, we have checkout at noon at the time uh, before COVID. And so uh, around 11 o'clock, one of my innkeepers let me know that there was some damage. Objection, hearsay. Um, did something happen that caused you to go to Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's trailer? Yes, I was informed that. Objection, hearsay. It's not being offered for the truth, Your Honor. I mean, it, may we approach on this okay, one topic? Okay, sure. Thank you. Freaking lady's annoying, dude. <laughs> so annoying. What, if anything, happened the next morning, Mr. Knight? Uh, the innkeepers let me know that there was some damage in one of the trailers, and it happened to be Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's trailer. So I wanted to inspect 
the uh, trailer because I was extremely worried. Um, all those trailers that Steve and I worked on were like my babies and um, the one they were staying in was the only one that was mostly original and restored 1950s style and so I was uh, very concerned. <laughs> So what did you observe when you went to the trailer? I observed that um, there was a light sconce by the bathroom um, in the bedroom that had been broken off the wall and a couple pieces were on the floor and they were, um, and yeah, it was basically just broken. The light fixture was hanging on the wall still, except for the pieces that were on the floor. Did you come to understand how that happened? Objection. Yeah. Foundation and right, foundation. I'll just say that's the foundation. How he knew? Did you ask how the sconce was broken? Objection. Objection. Sustained. <laughs> how often do light fixtures in the trailers break? Um, they break uh, pretty often. I mean, it's not like a usual thing, but things in the trailers generally get broken because it's all vintage trailers and. Um, I would say as much as every couple weeks, there's some incident of damage in one of the trailers. In this case, Mr. Depp had told me that. Objection. Do you say? Objection. Um, so anyway, yes. Beyond the light fixture, was anything else in the trailer damaged? No, everything else looked fine. In fact, we have a, a something we call a piggy fee uh, that we address to guests that if there's anything what we call inconsiderate or unusually large messes, we charge them extra for it for a $25 an hour cleaning fee, but they did not receive one of those because everything outside of light fixture looks fine. And what was your reaction to seeing the damaged light fixture? Um, to be honest, I was look. relieved because it was not a big deal. I just tucked. There was already another. Smug ass, smirky ass look, dude. Like, it's just so smug. Like, she's just fucking better than everyone else, dude. I hate it. There was light in the room, so I just tucked the wires in the wall until I had a few months later time to um, buy. It was matching sconce with another one in the room. So I had to, on eBay, find a matching pair that would fit there. And uh, when I finally got around to it, I was able to get that and charge it to uh, Nathan, who had, whose credit card I had. And what was your understanding of who Nathan was? Mr. Depp's assistant. OK. And what did you charge Nathan or Mr. Depp for replacing that, that pair of light fixtures? The pair came out to $62. It's freaking pocket lint to Johnny Depp. 62 bucks. While you were on site, um, Mr. Knight, did you ever wear a mesh shirt? <laughs> no, I would absolutely never wear that. What the hell? <laughs> At any time during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's stay on the property, did you see Mr. Depp become physical with anyone? Objection I did not. leading. Okay. Overruled. That's fine. I'm sorry, that answer was. Uh, I, I never saw Mr. Depp get physical with anyone when I saw him. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ne um. Man. Yeah, they don't like this witness at all. Because everything he's saying is showing that Amber Heard is the aggressor, the abuser, the one that's always causing the problems. They don't like that at all, man. Justice for Johnny Depp, people.